for a reversible reaction occurring in a closed system. At some point, the forward reaction rate will equal the reverse reaction rate. At this point, the concentrations of both the products and reactants will remain constant. This condition is known as a chemical equilibrium. At equilibrium, the concentrations of the reactants and the concentration of the products will remain constant. Therefore, it is possible to calculate a value reflecting this condition. This value is known as an equilibrium constant, or Kc. In this video, I will explain how to use a Kc value to calculate the concentrations of both reactants and products at equilibrium. Consider the following practice problem. The Kc for the following reaction is 2.18 times 10 to the 6 at 730 degrees Celsius. The reaction is hydrogen gas reacting with bromine vapor producing hydrogen bromide. Both reactants and products are gases. Therefore, this reaction is occurring in a closed system. Suppose we're given the following starting concentration for hydrogen bromide. According to the practice problem, we're starting with 3.20 moles of HBr in a 12 liter vessel. And we're asked to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of hydrogen gas, bromine vapor, and the HBr. It is possible to calculate the equilibrium concentrations for the reactants and the products because we're given a starting amount for the HBr. We're also given a Kc value for this reaction, which is 2.18 times 10 to the 6 at a temperature of 730 degrees Celsius. This Kc value is only valid at that temperature. In other words, for every equilibrium constant, a specific temperature must be indicated. Before continuing with the calculation, let's review some basic concepts associated with the reaction that is in equilibrium. The double arrows in this reaction indicate that the reaction is reversible. At equilibrium, the forward reaction rate is equal to the reverse reaction rate. Do not confuse rate with amounts. In other words, although the forward rate is equal to the reverse rate, that does not imply that the amount of the reactant is equal to the amount of the product. reaction will remain in equilibrium unless a stress is imposed on the system. This is known as Le Chalier's principle. According to Le Chalier's principle, a system in equilibrium will remain in equilibrium until a stress is imposed on the system. For example, suppose more hydrogen gas was added to the system at equilibrium. How would the system adjust to relieve that stress? Well, if more hydrogen gas is added to the system, then more bromine will be consumed. Therefore, the amount of bromine will decrease. And more HBr will be produced. This is known as a ripe shift. In other words, by increasing the amount of hydrogen gas, the entire reaction must shift to the right to re-establish equilibrium. Now suppose the bromine was slowly removed while the system is at equilibrium. Now the system must shift to the left 
to reestablish the concentration of bromine. This will cause the amount of hydrogen gas to increase and the amount of HBr to decrease. In other words, shifting to the left will consume the HBr and produce the reactants. Now suppose a catalyst is added to the system. A catalyst will increase the reaction rate. However, if a catalyst is added to this system, both rates will be increased by the same amount. So therefore, adding a catalyst to a system at equilibrium has no overall effect. How would increasing the temperature affect this reaction at equilibrium? Increasing the temperature favors the direction that is endothermic. For example, if the forward reaction is endothermic, heat is being consumed. Therefore, by increasing the temperature, the rate of the forward reaction will increase, causing the reaction to shift to the right. If the reverse reaction is endothermic, then the reaction must shift to the left. For a gaseous system at equilibrium, increasing the pressure favors the direction of the fewest number of moles. In this case, there are two moles of reactants, one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of bromine gas. On the product side, there are two moles of HBr. Therefore, increasing the pressure on this particular system has no overall effect. Okay, now let's return to our original calculation where we're looking for the equilibrium concentrations of hydrogen gas, bromine vapor, and HBr. When performing calculations involving systems at equilibrium, the first step is to write a KC expression. In a KC expression, the concentration of the products are divided by the concentration of the reactants. The KC expression follows a concept known as the law of mass action, where the concentrations of the reactants and the products at equilibrium are related to the coefficients in the balanced equilibrium equation. In this expression, the concentration of HBr has been raised to the second power, which corresponds to the coefficient in the balanced equation. The coefficients in front of H2 and Br2 are both one. Therefore, in the KC expression, there is no need to write an exponent for these two concentrations. Setting up an ice table is a convenient way to keep track of the events that occur as this reaction approaches equilibrium where I refers to initial, C refers to change, and E refers to equilibrium. The initial concentrations of both reactants, the H2 and the Br2, are both zero. We were given 3.20 mole of the HBr, but since a KC expression deals with concentrations, the moles must be converted to molarity. To do so, simply divide the 3.20 moles by 12.0 liters, which gives an initial concentration of the HBr to be 0 0.267 molar. Since the initial concentrations of the H2 and Br2 are both zero, in order to reach equilibrium, this reaction must proceed to the left. 
Therefore, the HBR will be consumed. Notice that a 2 is in front of this x corresponding to the 2 in a balanced equilibrium equation. Now the equilibrium concentrations may be written as follows, where x represents the H2 and x represents the BR2 and 0.267 minus 2x represents the HBR. Now that a relationship between the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and the products has been determined, the KC expression may now be used as follows, where the concentration of HBr is written as 0.267 minus 2x. In the KC expression, the concentration of HBr is squared. Likewise, in this expression, the concentration of HBr must be squared. The concentrations of both reactants may be written as x. This expression may now be simplified as follows, where 0.267 minus 2x squared may be divided by x squared. Since the Kc for this reaction is equal to 0.267 minus 2x squared divided by x squared, the value of x may be calculated as follows, simply taking the square root of both sides of this expression. This will result in the following relationship. 0.267 minus 2x divided by x is equal to 1.48 times 10 to the third. Therefore, in this particular case, x will be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4 molar. At equilibrium, the concentration of H2 and Br2 will both be 1.80 times 10 to the minus 4 molar and the concentration of HBr will remain essentially unchanged at approximately 0.267 molar. The very large Kc value, 2.18 times 10 to the 6, implies that for this particular reaction, the forward reaction is favored. This is confirmed because at equilibrium the concentrations of both reactants are very small compared to the concentration of the product.